Hello all, back again with another PyDOS video. I was expecting to have a video on Wi-Fi using the RP2040 Connect. And while I did manage to get Adafruit's demonstration software running under PyDOS, unfortunately I peeled off the USB-C connector on the device and that kind of put a halt to the Wi-Fi work. The good news is I reached out to Arduino and they're going to send me out a replacement. So hopefully not too long from now we'll be able to come out with a video that demonstrates some of the Wi-Fi capabilities of the Arduino Nano Connect under PyDOS. But in the meantime, I've been doing a lot of tweaking and playing around with the PyDOS software and the external programs that I had. And I thought I'd uh, update you on the progress there. The biggest thing that I've done is has to do with multi-threading. But before we go into that, I wanted to talk about some of the changes I made in the software. If you've been following my GitHub site, some of you might have noticed that uh, I've reorganized the repository. It's basically added a directory structures to support both CircuitPython and MicroPython, as well as all the specific microcontroller boards that I've been working with. It's sort of funny, uh, after I added batch command support to PyDOS, I was regretting it a little bit because it did add a fair amount of memory to the footprint of the operating system. And in fact, uh, it was after I added the batch commands that I started having real trouble running adventure under the MicroPython version of PyDOS. However, after I reorganized the GitHub structure and, set, and um, created the subdirectories for everything, I was really happy to have the batch files and to be able to set up a, a setup file. So basically, after you download the, the GitHub directory and you copy its contents onto a microcontroller, you can just run the setup uh, batch file and it'll, it'll prompt you for whether you're running CircuitPython or MicroPython and then which board you're running on and then it'll copy all the uh, files over. I've already cleaned this one up, so it, it didn't run. But basically, it'll copy all the files up from the subdirectories uh, and get them ready to run. Uh, the other thing I did in the data structure, in the directory structure, was uh, separate out all the PyBasic stuff and put that into a subdirectory. So that means that before you run PyBasic, you want to change down into the PyBasic directory and then uh, launch the program from there. Um, the one thing that that does complicate quite a bit is um, I, I modified PyBasic so that you can actually launch it from the REPL directly. Uh, and, and what that does is allows you to run the larger basic program. It's basically allows you to run Adventure. But if you're under MicroPython and you have PyBasic in a subdirectory, you've got to manually basically change down to that subdirectory. Um, and you know that's sort of what PyDOS does for you. I mean, it uses DOS rather than uh, the py, uh, Python code to, to move around and do directory commands. But there are a couple that you have to learn if you want to do this. Um, and basically, you import the OS, and then you use the OS change directory command to move down to the PyBasic directory. Once you've done that, you can just import PyBasic, and that'll launch that up. And then from there, uh, you have plenty of memory to be running uh, Adventure, which is the larger, largest basic program that, that I've tried to run. Um, and that, that runs from the REPL just fine. Um, now, if you don't want to deal with using the import OS and the os.change directory, uh, you can just copy all the files that are down in the PyBasic subdirectory in PyDOS up to the root directory, um, and then uh, you wouldn't have to change the directory if you're on the REPL. Um, I'm gonna, we don't need to start this up. Go ahead and reboot and load into PyDOS. Um, one of the other things I stumbled across is that out on GitHub, there's a MicroPython-based full-screen editor. The directory that it's posted out is robert-hh. I've gone ahead and forked that under my account, and I'll create links to it in the descriptions below if you want to take a look at it. But he's got some good documentation and really is a step up from my Edline uh, editor. Um, so if I, if I type in fs edit, and we'll go ahead and edit the, that setup file. So you'll see it'll, it, it brings up a handy little full screen editor. I can move the cursor around left and right. Um, and then, you know, if I want to change something, I can hit the delete key and type the new text. Um, um, so it, it really simplifies uh, editing versus using the uh, Edline clone that I originally included. I still have the Edline clone, but uh, I, I don't use it much anymore. This is what I used to do all my editing under PyDOS. Um, so we'll go ahead and quit. 
The other area I was playing around with really was as a result of me looking into the Wi-Fi work. When I was looking at how the ESP32 does its Wi-Fi, it turns out that that's a multi-core microprocessor. And that got me thinking about the RP2040 because it's got multiple cores. And so I started playing around with the threading and I added a little bit of threading support into PyDOS. Now, the threading on the RP2040 on under MicroPython is a little bit different in that MicroPython can't completely support multiprocessing on the, on the multiple cores. So while it appears that you're running two threads, you're actually only ever running one thing at a time. But unless you're doing real-time stuff, that's a pretty subtle issue. To, to demonstrate some of the multi-core processing, let's take a look at a, a typical Blink program. So if I edit addblink.py, so this is this is basically a, a a blink program, and it's you'll you'll find you can find these out on the internet uh, or GitHub or Adafruit site. They turn on and off off an LED and put a, a delay in between it. But they're usually stuck in an infinite loop like this, and it kind of makes sense because the the idea behind using a microcontroller is that it's a tiny little processor and you dedicate it to one task. So you, when you write a routine, you don't worry about setting up infinite loops or what's going to happen after the routine ends because you're assuming that the, whatever code you're doing is, is dedicated to a single task. So you can see in this example, we set up an infinite loop with a while equals true. And then we basically alternate the value of the LED and sleep for half a second between each time we do that. And this just goes on and on. And basically it assumes that this is the only thing you want to do on the microprocessor and it doesn't end. If I run this under PyDOS, it'll start blinking. And why don't we go ahead and do that? I'll go ahead and quit this. And if I run uh, bad blink, it'll it'll start blinking. And you can see the processor's blinking with the blue light now. Uh, but there's no way to exit it. If I hit Control C, it crashes the operating system. I can restart. Now let's throw the second core into this. What if I can throw that blinking routine off into the second core and then continue to run PyDOS programs in the first core? So let's, I, I created a little routine and basically what run as thread does is um, reads in the file um, th that you want to run and um, encapsulates it into a little bit of threading code. Uh, it, it really, I mean, all it does is creates a function out of it and then uh, calls the threading function with uh, passing it that function um, and then uh, returns. So if we go ahead and run as thread bad blink.py. So you see there's my output. It says the blinking has started. Uh, and as you can see, it is indeed is blinking on my microcontroller. Uh, but I still have PyDOS running. So now the only downside of this is that it's still an infinite loop. So and it's still just going to keep running all the time and it's running on that second core. So if I want to run another thread, so let's say I want to run the hello program, basically won't let me run any more threads because it's telling me that the core is currently in use. So way to get around this, let's see, sometimes if I uh, reboot the microcontroller, let's see, did that stop the blinking? Yes, it did. One of the things about using the MicroPython threading library is that it is still experimental. And uh, I have managed to freeze up uh, my the microcontroller uh, to the point where I needed to power cycle it a number of times. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're using it. But so now I should have an open thread. I type in hello.py. If I type it right, On as thread hello.py. Okay, so I ran hello world there. And hello obviously is just a just a print statement. So obviously that exits very nicely from the uh, second thread. So that's still available if I run it again. So I can run that multiple times. So now well, how do I get out of a, a loop that's running in as a second thread? Uh, I tried a number of experiments and some of that code is still visible in the uh, threading program. Um, you see uh, experiments to see if the interrupts can shut. So basically, I tried to use timer interrupts and uh, th throw out various types of system exits, hoping that that would kill the thread. Uh, and unfortunately, none of that worked. Um, I'm, you know, I, I left it in here because I, if I get other ideas, I might still play with it. Um, but at the moment, I, I can't find a way to f force the background thread to exit. So what I did as a uh, 
way of dealing with this is I, whenever I'm running a procedure that I'm going to run as a background thread, I built into it a way to send it an exit message. And I found two ways of doing that. One is with global variables. And the other is the threading library itself has a, a lock mechanism. Um, and I'm not sure what advantage that has over using the global variables, but I did experiment with both of them. So if we, I created a procedure called stop thread, which basically acquires a lock or changes uh, one of my environment variables, uh, which is now a global variable. So if we take a look at the threaded version of blank or thread blank.py, you see I'm checking a an environment variable called stop thread. Uh, and as well as the the lock flag. So <clears throat> if either the lock flag has been acquired or the environment variable stop thread is not equal to go, it'll break out of this loop. Um, and otherwise it'll just keep in blinking. And then just to, so I could see when it was exiting, I created a, a little print loop. So it'll send a little output to the screen at just before it exits. So why don't we give this a try? If I do a uh, run as thread threadblink.py. Now, <clears throat> I can, if I do a set, you can see the values of the current uh, environment variables, and sure enough, stop thread has been set to go. So if I set stop thread, and I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and, what happens if I just delete it? Yeah, so that's enough to, trigger the exit. I get the countdown and it says uh, thread blink is exiting. And sure enough, it's no longer blinking. So I can go ahead and run that again. The blinking starts up again. Uh, the other option is I can run stop thread. And once again, it shuts down. And we actually know that it's shutting down because of the lock acquire, uh, because in the stop thread, I don't know if you noticed this when I typed it out before, but in the stop thread, um, string, I'm actually setting a different uh, environment variable than the one that's being checked by thread blink. So actually, yeah, that one didn't clean it up. So that's basically uh, multi-threading under PyDOS. Um, as I said, it's very easy to crash the microcontroller, so be careful with it. I uh, had a lot of fun playing with it. I think that's about it for uh, the updates that went out to GitHub. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you some Wi-Fi stuff before too long. So hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.